Hello, and welcome to another episode of Choo Choo is a Ranker, and on this episode we are going to be discussing the discography of St. Vincent. Hailing from Dallas, Texas in the United States, Annie Clark began her music career as a member of the Polyphonic Spree and Suffren Stevens touring band. Her idiosyncratic stage performances gained attention, and in 2006 Annie Clark released her debut solo album Marry Me under the moniker of St. Vincent and moved on from there, gaining considerable critical acclaim and even a Grammy award for her fourth self-titled LP along the way. And as for my own fandom, it's a casual but appreciative one. I first came across St. Vincent while making my Albums of the Year series and was surprised at her ability to consistently be featured on those lists, even winning Album of the Year accolades on two of them. Although, to be fair, I think those wins are more to do with weak competition than any great masterstroke by St. Vincent, but that's still pretty damn impressive. So, without further ado, let's be complete rankers and rank up a storm. These are the Albums of St. Vincent, ranked from worst to best. So, we're going to be kicking off this list with Marry Me from 2007, which was St. Vincent's debut LP. And this album is a fairly typical debut in that it's not quite fully formed, but some of the building blocks of future success are readily apparent. Stylistically, this is a much softer record than what would follow. It's twee whimsical pop having a lightweight and delicate appeal, which is very much at odds with the bombastic, almost abrasive nature of some of her later albums. And as such, some of the peak songs on this are very delightful and easy on the ears with Annie Clark coming across with an almost Disney princess style wispy charm. Highlights include the opening Now Now, which has a fun jumbled soundscape that gradually builds up into an impressive maelstrom. Annie's Morrissey-esque vocal lines are also a nice touch. Your Lips Are Red is a darker tune that introduces the type of unstable riffs and off-kilter art rock melodies that would shortly become St. Vincent's bread and butter. Title track Marry Me is a lovely billowing piano ballad with a great sense of space and some nicely delicate brass additions. While All My Stars Aligned is another ballad, this time a steadily marching one with a wonderfully old-fashioned vibe to it. It kind of sounds like a modernised version of a 1940s hit. It also contains an overt musical reference to the James Bond theme, so I wonder what that's all about. Maybe she just likes pushy galore. But the album does run into some serious trouble on the back end. There are too many pleasant yet utterly forgettable tunes such as The Apocalypse Song, Landmines and Human Racing waiting in the wings. Worse still, they all come back to back and ultimately end up boring you with their polite blandness. Thankfully, the closing jazz-inflected What Me Worry does pull things back on track at the very end with yet more lovely balladry. So yeah, this debut LP is a bit of a wobbly start for Annie Clark's solo career. There are some strong songs that show her potential, but the second side of the record noticeably lags in quality, which makes it a bit tedious to get all the way through. As a big fan of consistency on records, this one doesn't quite hit the spot. Three stars. Next up we have Mass Seduction from 2017, which was St. Vincent's 5th LP, and this album is notable for turning in a much more synth pop orientated direction. The guitar is mostly sidelined here in favour of pianos, keys and synths. One might assume that that would make a big difference to the soundscapes and stylings of the record, but actually it doesn't. Mass Seduction feels like a very marginal or incremental step away from her previous Grammy Award winning self-titled LP. Now, as we'll discuss later, that album itself was a refining of the record that came before it. So basically, to cut a long story short, this LP is where we enter the land of diminishing returns. This is still a really solid record with many good songs on it, but there's not really much here that we haven't heard already from St. Vincent. And those diminishing returns sadly bring some of the weakest tunes of the artist's career, ultimately putting a bit of a dent in the record's overall quality. The opening ballad, Hang On Me, is oddly lifeless and lacks any kind of memorable hook. Saviour and Fear of the Future are rope synth-bop editions that feel like textbook filler tracks. While Slow Disco tries for a classically leaning slice of elegant Baroque pop but unfortunately forgets to bring any kind of interesting melody with it. 
Thankfully, even though Clark is coasting on this particular LP, she still has enough innate skill to craft more bangers than duds. Pills is great fun with its instant sing-along chorus, bright melodies and nihilistically funny lyrics. Pills to grow, pills to shrink, pills 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 with a nice stiff drink. Title track Mass Seduction has a funky Prince style groove to it and makes her a slick slice of radio pop. Sugar Boy has a thumping electronica bent to it, its prowling club energy belied by its subtly miserable chorus. Los Angeles is fantastic with his buzzing, worry synth pop and memorable chorus bringing the catchy goods to the table. New York on the other hand is a lovely ballad that straddles the line between quietly tender and stratospherically epic. While Smoking Section is an appealingly dark closer, with its suicide stained lyrics making you lean in closer. Sometimes I go to the edge of my roof, and I think I'll jump just to punish you. And if I should float on the taxis below, no one will notice. So yeah, although Mass Seduction is basically St. Vincent paint by numbers and has a handful of pretty weak tracks on it, the highs are still admirably spectacular and are enough to pull the record through to a mild win, 3.5 stars. Next up we have Love This Giant from 2012, which is an outlier on this list as it's by David Byrne and St Vincent rather than one of St Vincent's solo records. And of course David Byrne was the frontman of the legendary 70s and 80s jittery alt rock band Talking Heads. And you can see why these two would want to work together as they both have that desire for unusual experimentation as well as a proclivity for clipped jumbled riffs. And clipped jumbled riffs are absolutely order of the day here. This is a record that is so dense with taped together instrumentation that it feels on the verge of falling to pieces. There's just so much going on during every second of its runtime that it's kind of hard to get your head around at times. By rights this should be an over cluttered mess and to be fair at points it is, but by and large this record really works. And the reason it works is down to the propulsive nature of the beats underpinning everything and the limitless charisma of its stars. St Vincent shines on Ice Age which has a cool rhythmic pulse and a catchy chorus that jumps out of the track as well as a melancholy lyric that acts as a metaphor for depression. She also comes to the fore on Optimist, which has a more stable composition than most of the songs, and as such its horn splash balladry stands out as an easy high spot. But it can't be denied that it's actually David Byrne who steals the show here. The track Dinner thrives on its kooky charm, ear catching vocal lines and odd lyrics like, Harry's gonna get some appetizers. Well, he's out of the range of small arms fire. <laughs> what? I am an ape is tons of carny fun, as over stretching horns and flutes he delivers a highly amusing lyric including the chorus of I am an ape, I stand and wait, a masterpiece, a hairy beast. I should watch TV is awesome with its urgent vocal performance and thrusting XTC style energy, while Closer, Outer Space and Time is a beautiful star strewn ballad that ends the record with an epic flourish. But the album isn't perfect and sadly St Vincent has to bear the brunt of the weaker cuts here. Weekend in the Dust is a boring bass driven tune that has no discernible melody, while The Forest Awakes doesn't really come together in a compelling way, and both of those tunes are fronted by poor old Annie. But yeah, although this isn't as immediate as some of St Vincent's solo records, and is definitely a grower, I find this LP to be a lot of fun and substantially different to anything else that she has made, which gives it an interesting appeal. Plus, David Byrne man, he's a fucking legend and is in very fine fettle here and is obviously having so much fun with this. Four stars. If you trespass in this garden to a place you should not go, if you step out of the shadows, see the city far below. I am a lady, I stand in way. Coming in next we have Strange Mercy from 2011 which was St Vincent's third LP. And this is the album where Clark finally discovered and settled into what would become her usual style. 
The more freeform compositions of her previous LP, Acta, have been reined in here and fed through a proper pop structure machine, while also still maintaining a frisson of that album's idiosyncratic weirdness. Also reined in here is the symphonic nature of her previous work. In contrast to the busy soundscapes of Acta, Strange Mercy feels very clean and spacious, exposing more of the naked core of the tunes and in the process creating its own distinct atmosphere. Despite all of its pop hooks and cool guitar lines, this is an LP that feels distant, cold and decidedly sad. And the record is pretty fantastic, but it does have one glaring fault, that being that the last three songs do take a fairly big step down in terms of quality. The back-to-back -back pairing of dilettant and hysterical strength feels like the record having to take a breather, with the tracks coming off as listless blustery filler. Closer, Year of the Tiger is slightly better with its straight-ahead buzzing pop energy, but it's still not quite enough to pull the record to a fully satisfying conclusion. But slightly bungled ending aside, and the rest of the record is great. Highlights include the opener, Chloe in the Afternoon, which has some of actors off-kilter weirdness but bolsters it with a newfound talent for a catchy chorus. It immediately puts St. Vincent on the path to her trademark sound. Cruel is the quintessential St. Vincent song, a spectacular, insanely catchy tune with some great guitar riffs and an appealing tween is sewn into its seams. It's absolutely awesome. Cheerleader, meanwhile, has that spacious feel that defines the record. It's clean lines letting the subtly miserable lyrics breathe before exploding into a sleep-depriving chorus. Surgeon is gnarly with its depression-imbued resignation, Asian-sounding synth break, cool clip guitar lines, and the super-memorable repeating chorus of Best finest surgeon, come cut me open. Neutered Fruit brings some of Acta's fantastic soundtracky oddness back to the table, combining it with all kinds of impressive guitar licks and steadily marching drum work. While Champagne Year is a stunningly tender ballad that is so stripped back that you can almost hear a pin drop. Clark's voice is just so beguiling on the track, emotion leaking out of every syllable. So yeah, despite a bit of a weak close, Strange Mercy is a great album and a very essential step within St. Vincent's discography that basically sets up the rest of her career. Four stars. Next up we have Daddy's Home from 2022, which was St. Vincent's 6th LP and most recent to date. And the title of this record refers to Annie Clark's father, who bought a ticket to the big house by indulging in all kinds of naughty financial fraud. He served a decade behind bars before being released, hence Daddy's Home. As you can well imagine, her father's incarceration proved to be quite impactful on Annie, and if you sift through her catalogue you'll be able to find many lyrical references to that situation across her career. And this particular St. Vincent LP is notable for being a total change up in her style, which after the rather paint by numbers mass seduction is more than welcome. But the direction she has chosen to go in here is very surprising. Awesome, but surprising. And that direction is basically like a straight up emulation of Inner Visions and Songs in the Key of Life era Stevie Wonder. And the emulation goes beyond mere songwriting and melodies, it's soaked right into the very marrow of this record. This is an LP that has obviously been recorded without much in the way of digitization. It's an old school kind of album recorded in an old school kind of way, and it sounds impressively authentic. This LP is also notable for being mostly comprised of ballads and languorous atmospheric pieces. Whilst yeah, there are a couple of like 1970s funk tunes such as Pay Your Way in Pain and Down, the majority of this record is slow paced and downbeat. And that works well as far as I'm concerned, as St. Vincent has always had a way with weeping ballads, as well as a good emotional core to her music. The album is consistent, atmospherically cohesive and full of wonderful 1970s kissed highlights. My favourite of which include Live in the Dream, which is great with its hazy psychedelic atmosphere building and wicked climactic guitar solo. The Melting of the Sun is yet more psychedelia that reinforces the tone of the album and also features some tasteful gospel additions. The Laughing Game impresses with its glacial pace and molasses thick atmosphere that locks in the flavour of half asleep depression. Somebody Like Me is gorgeous with its resigned folky texture and swooningly beautiful vocal work. While well, My Baby Wants a Baby is great with its ridiculously epic Harry Nilsson style balladry bringing the melodic goods. So yeah, although it's a bit of an odd duck in St. Vincent's discography that totally bows out of her typical sound, Daddy's Home still absolutely nails what it's going for. It's a fantastic record, 4.5 stars.
Coming in next and narrowly missing the top spot, we have Actor from 2009, which was St. Vincent's second LP. And this album is singular within the artist's discography. It's really unique and odd and full of delightful idiosyncratic weirdness. The story behind the record goes that Annie Clark was suffering from a bit of writer's block after her first LP, so she took to scoring music set to scenes from her favourite films, only adding lyrics and vocals after the musical compositions were completed. And this gives the album its distinct vibe. It does indeed sound like some kind of strange hybrid between soundtrack and indie rock album. As such, a lot of these songs have indefinable free-flowing structures, favouring atmosphere building over catchy pop hooks. It's really bizarre but also very compelling. There's just no other album that I can think of that's similar to this one. I mean, it's very hard to make something truly unique and original in modern rock, but Annie Clark managed to do just that with this LP. And as for highlights, well it's almost a moot point as the record thrives on its consistency and all-consuming atmosphere. But my cherry picks would be The Strangers, which kicks the record off with a really interesting mix of twee Parisian sounding pop and gnarly guitar screams, as Clark begs you to paint the black hole blacker. Actor Out of Work sounds like a sprightly upbeat nugget of pop, but is actually a pretty brutal lyrical kiss off. You're a boxer in the ring, with brass knuckles underneath. You're the curses through my teeth. Black Rainbow has an interesting composition that takes in some lovely horns and flutes, even as the guitars slowly gather more and more marching aggression. Marrow is absolutely rad with its atmospheric synth textures, buckling under the weight of some wicked, raw sounding guitar work that makes the track instantly pop. While The Party is a beautiful creaking ballad that perfectly captures those moments where everyone else has gone home but just somehow still there with this one other person. And it's in those moments when you know that you're almost definitely going to get laid. <laughs> Unless you're from Milton Keynes, in which case you're almost definitely going to get laid out and have your wallet stolen. But yeah, that's just scratching the surface because there's not a weak track on the album, and everything works together to serve the record's overall atmosphere. So whilst Actor might not be one of the most accessible St. Vincent albums, it is ultimately one of her most artistically satisfying 5 stars. So here we are at the top of the mountain, and the St. Vincent gold medal is going to go to her self-titled fourth LP from 2014. And this record made a pretty big splash upon its release, gaining considerable critical acclaim and eventually a Grammy award for the best alternative music album. And what we have here is Annie Clark taking the more pop-orientated parts of her last LP, Strange Mercy, and refining them to absolute perfection. And that's it really, like there's not a particularly complicated reason as to why this is the best St. Vincent album. Its placing is solely down to the fact that it has the highest concentration of unforgettably catchy tunes. The songwriting and consistency of quality on this record is remarkably high. I mean, the only track that even thinks about wobbling is the penultimate, Every Tear Disappears, but even that is harmless and has a decent energy to boot. So yeah, this LP is all about tip-top banging high spots. Rattlesnake kicks the record off with a suitably rattling composition, impressing with some fun guitar work and its sweaty, breathless chorus. Birth in Reverse is one of Clark's catchiest songs with its skyscraping chorus, growling bass and memorable clipped guitar riff. Prince Johnny is an exceptionally beautiful ballad with a resigned synth texture and some emotive pain-ridden lyrics. Digital Witness is a slice of synth-pop perfection, with its instantly danceable chorus, cheeky horns and fun lyrics that fire pot shots at hopeless couch potatoes. I Prefer Your Love is a lovely balladeering ode to Annie's mother. It's an interesting turn from an artist that obviously keeps herself quite emotionally well guarded. And speaking of emotions, Psychopath is a giant ballad with a wilting melody and an epic light as the loft anthemic quality. While Closer, Severed Crossed Fingers, is yet another of those epic weeping ballads that St. Vincent is just so damn good at making. Plus the lyrics are also pretty damn great. Found my severed fingers in that rubble there. Well, you stole the heart right out of my chest. So yeah, this record achieves a win through sheer pop bangers. It is an absolutely fantastic album that balances its radio pop moments with deeper, more emotive cuts very well indeed. Five stars. So, now I've come to the end of my deep dive, the question remains, did I gain more appreciation for the artist? And the answer this time is, yeah, I guess so. 
This discography run didn't offer up any revelations, but I really enjoyed my time with these records and I do now feel like I have a stronger connection to Annie Clark's music, and I'm looking forward to seeing what she does next. And that's my list, but of course that won't be your list, so why not sound off in the comments and tell me how you'd rank these records? Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and all that other kind of YouTube jazz. Make sure to take care of yourself, but most importantly, just keep on ranking. Thank you.